everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm really excited to share this absolutely stunning, very pretty gift bag or gift box or storage box. It's entirely up to you how you want to do this. It's using some dies from the new Card Baking Magic collection. And um, again, that will all be shared below and I'll show you it in a moment. But I, the main focus is this window and all the stamps and dies are from the collection as well. But I just, as soon as I saw the window, I thought I needed to make some kind of little house. You know, I love to make these kind of things. I have a whole playlist of buildings <laughs> and, um, you know, you could use this kind of style on any of those really that I've shared there. But um, a few of you recognize like the roof effect. That's kind of my go-to. I really like this style. And um, look at the side here. This lovely, you've got this trellis, you've got the little milk churn, you've got the planter, and then I've got like a tree coming down. That's the look, you've got the little, hanging basket these do actually they're real shutters as well so they do close but because I've got the window um, basket there or what's it called your flowers window flowers and then those there it does kind of stop me folding it flat but you can if you want to and then you've got all these lovely um, you know stamps and dies here and then on the top I've just stuck a big bow and I've used some bunting which is also part of the collection but I've just fastened mine with a velcro dot I did originally go to do a ribbon with the holes but then I thought no I'm going to do solid handles you can see you've got lots of room inside now this one is a sample and I got so attached to it I thought I'm going to make myself another one so before this one gets posted I thought I'll do this tutorial and make one for myself too I think I'm going to keep some of my ribbon scraps because I do like to keep I don't like to throw you know um things that aren't quite big enough to maybe make a bow but they're great as like little just decorations on things so I think I'm going to keep them in here but um, I'm also going to extend the side. So I'm going to give you the measurements for this exact one because some of you, you know, might want to, you know, this size will work really well for you and I'll put them in my blog. But I'm also going to do, today's one's going to be four inches wide rather than three. That's all that's changing. And I think the height will be slightly different, but you'll still get this same look. But of course, you don't have to have the handles at all. You can just have it as a really pretty box. And I just think it's gorgeous. So yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so these are the dies that I've used here. So I've kind of used a bit of a mix. So I've used these sprigs here to create the kind of tree branches, which are these big ones here. Okay, so I pick that one up there. You can kind of see it a bit better. Um, and then I've used this one here. I've used the trellis, the milk churn, the little kind of vase there, the basket, and then lots of these little sprigs, the, you know, the planter, these little ones here, the grass just to build up the scene. This is the window one. Okay, it's really nice, the beautiful day window die sets. That's it, it's the province collection, that's what I was trying to think of earlier. You've got all these little sprigs and more grass there. But you can also, this die here allows you to actually put it over the actual window part and you can open that as well. So you can have the shutters and the window open, but I've just done the shutters. And then this is a birdcage one, which was there for some reason, but that's also there, but you may well have already seen that. Um, if not, there will be, you know, tutorials coming with that, no doubt. So I've gone ahead and already done the roof. So you'll need two of these pieces, which I'll give you in a moment. If you want to make this same one, click on this playlist here and it will show you how to make it. I don't want to have to do, you know, that again in a video when I've already done it before. So just head over there. But alternatively, you can add some, you know, roof looking paper. You know, you can get all your kind of wood grain papers and things like that. You could certainly put something like that on there. And um, I keep saying it, but do head over to Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group if you haven't, because lots of people have made these kind of buildings that I've shared and they, you know, they've use papers and stuff to create their roof effect and they look really good so and these are all the bits and pieces and that's the time consuming part but that's the best part for me and that's all the detail the actual box itself is very very easy to do so if you want to do the one that I've just shared there you're going to need two pieces of nine and a quarter by 12 inch cardstock and you want to score along the nine and the quarter side, you want to score at five and three quarters and eight and three quarters. And then along the 12 inch side, you want to score at three and 10. And then you'll want two pieces of six and a half by four for the roof. And you will score along the four inch side at three quarters. 
okay? So that's the measurements there. I will write them down and you can revert to that if you want to do that thinner three inch width. But today I'm going to do mine in four because this is going to be more of a storage piece. And again, if you do want it to be storage, I'm only putting ribbons in mine, so it's very lightweight. But if you are going to put something heavier, um, because this would be great to put a nice mug in, so you might want to use it for like a Mother's Day, you know, gift bag. If you have got heavier things, I always say just line your base maybe with a piece of grey board or just some thicker cardstock, layer it up a little bit. Okay, so you're going to want two pieces of cardstock. That's ten and a quarter by twelve. Along the ten and a quarter side, you want to score at five and three quarters and nine and three quarters. The reason I've done it that slight, you know, some of you might think, well, why didn't you just score at six? It's because I'm using that window and I didn't want that bigger kind of gap either side. So, you know, lots of you out there that know how to make your boxes, you you know, and I know lots of you will, you can make this, you know, any size you want. But that's why, you know, I do these things sometimes. It depends on the dies that I'm using. And then along the 12 inch side, you want to score at four and 11. Okay, so do that on both pieces and then for the roof, I think this is the same size as what I've mentioned for the other one anyway, so I would have already said this, but you want two pieces that are four by six and a half. Yeah, it's the same. And along the four, you want to score at three quarters of an inch. Do that twice. I've just rounded off the corners there with my corner rounder. And then I've only done this on one because that's all you're going to see. You know, the back is the back. If you do want to do it on both, if you are giving it as a gift to someone, then I would say do both. But these are one inch circles. I've just punched and I punched 50, okay? So you'll need 50 for each side. And like I said, head to that video and you'll be able to see exactly how to do it. It's very, very easy. You just trim off any excess on the sides and you get that really cool effect. Okie dokie, so let me just get rid of the scoreboard. So with the two pieces that you have of this, you just want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. And then you just want to cut up, so you want the half inch tab on the right hand side, okay, and you're just going to cut up the first score line to the first score line there, and then the next score line again, just cut up like so, remove that one completely, and then just take a wedge off of that one and that one, okay. And then I'm just going to grab my other scissors and then I'm just going to take a little wedge off of that one. And then if you go along this top piece now, if you cut down the other score lines again to the first score line, like so. And then remove that little piece altogether. Take a little wedge off of there. Just tidy that one up a little bit. Like so. And then I'm also just going to remove the score line from this piece here just to tidy it up. I'll just get rid of all of that. Okay, so that's what you will have and you will need both the same. All right, so that's two pieces. I don't think I've scored. No, I didn't burnish those score lines there. There we go. Okay, next we need to attach these. So I'm gonna grab my glue and along one of the tabs here, I'm just going to run some glue and then I'm going to pop this one over the top and just focus on that base score line down here and then just make sure the rest all lines up. Okay, and then flip it over, fold in one side, fold in the other piece with this tab and again just add some glue and then just stick, stick that one underneath. Again, hold that all in place. Okay, and then this will be the top, which will all make sense in a moment. So this is the base. So I'm going to decide, you know, what one you want to be the front or the back. I'm then going to put down this one first of all. I'm going to add some glue onto the back of this side piece here. Fold that one in. And then again, add some glue on that one there. Fold that one in. And then finally add some glue on this one. Turn that one over. And then I'm just going to grab my ruler. And you can just go in there and just spread out all that glue. And this is where you can now cut a piece of cardstock. You might want to cut something. So I would say if it's a grey board, go a little bit shorter. You want to maybe do three and seven eighths of an inch by five and five eighths. 
um, maybe cover it with some pattern paper or something and you can sit that inside. I'm using the Kalau so again it will strengthen that and that will just give you a nice sturdier base if you are going to put you know a nice gift in there like I said a nice mug, heavy candles, you know some drink maybe then you know that will then help hold that all together. But um, now I think that's all looking really good although it looks like it's going off slightly but my measurements are all spot on and it's fine when I lay it that way. I think it's my mat. Like I said, I have tried to flatten it a little bit, but... Okay, so now that's that. So next, so the side pieces are just going to go in like that. They don't really do much, that's it, because you're going to attach your, your roof to this, but it does keep the shape. And I would say, you know, just put some tissue paper over the top of whatever it is that's going inside. But for me, it's a storage piece, so I'm not too worried. But this is now going to attach onto this is going to act as a hinge okay so what I would say is that it's up to you how much you want overhanging okay so I'm going to have about half an inch overhanging not including the scalloped edge it's just that cardstock about half an inch can you see it's, is it, there goes focusing now okay that's what I'm going to stick so you want to add some glue to this piece here do one at a time because you're once you've stuck one down you can use that as a guide for the other one and um, what I would also say is if you are going to put handles on it, put both of them together now, flat, mark where you want your holes to go and hole punch it now before you put it together. But like I said, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to put a Velcro piece um, dot there and then seal it. So this is the front. So I'm going to bring this up and you want to make sure you've got even you know, amount overhanging each side. And then I'm just going to kind of Make sure it's nice and straight. If you would rather draw a line, you know, half an inch up here, straight along, and use that as your guide, then you can do. But I'm just going to turn it up like this, and I can see there that that is nice and straight. Okay, so that's what you want to kind of be working towards, and then you can just kind of bring it up and just really stick all that down. And then if you grab your other one, Again, just pop some glue on here and then with this one I would line it up with this one first of all and then bring it down so you can make sure it's all straight so you know your overhangs the same on each side I need to bring that along this way a little bit Yeah, so just make sure it's straight. You can, you know, lay it down like that. And with your ruler, you can measure from the bottom down. So it's saying six and a half, and then here, oh, it's a little bit higher. So I do need to just pull that down just a little bit. So yeah, straighten it, bang on six and a half. And that there is bang on six and a half. I could probably just go down a smidge. And I've got about half an inch overhanging there as well. Okay, so use a liquid glue because it gives you that wiggle room. And the Kalau's great because it does give you a bit of time. And then, yep, it will dry extremely hard. But now that lines up perfectly there. Once I add the Velcro dot, and we've got a really cool roof. Okay, so play around with how, like I said, how much you want to overhang. You may want to shrink yours down. You might want quite a cute little cottage, you know, but because I'm using this window, that's why I've gone with those sizes and that proportion. So I'm going to use my Velcro dot now because it will just keep everything square and easier to decorate. So I'm just using these ones here. And this is the 15, 16 mil. So I'm going to pop one in the centre there. And then again, line up one of the ends first of all, and then that one, and then just squeeze it in the middle. And now, if you want to use Velcro dot, you can, and um, if you want to use uh, magnets, you can do, but these are so strong and they're not too bulky. As you can see there. Cool. Right, now it's down to decorating. So that is it, it's really easy to do. With the window, I've kept it in the die for the minix. It will make sense as to why, because I'm going to do holographic on mine because, you know, it's my favourite cardstock. So I've gone ahead and die cut one in white. Okay, just straightforward white cardstock, and that one's done. Then I've also gone and cut a piece of cardstock that is two by three and a quarter. That's if you're using this die, but the whole process you can do on any dies you've got. 
I've then gone and die cut it in the mirrored cardstock, but I've kept it in the die because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to the back of this because I want to add like a, you know, you know when you sometimes if you're walking past a house and the sun's shining on it, you actually can't see in the house, you know, there's just the glare from the window, from the glass, and um, that's the kind of look I was trying to recreate, is that, you know, kind of mirrored look, because that's what it looks like. Sometimes you just see yourself back in the glass. So that's why I use the silver on the other one, and then I'm going to use the holographic on this. But you could also use a dark grey or black, because again, if you, you know, I'm just looking out the window now, and actually when I look across at other houses, it's just black. So, but you might find black a bit too harsh. You could then go for like a grey, or as I've done on other samples and things, I've used yellow, you know, just because it just looks pretty. So it's entirely up to you, but I've just covered all of those pieces. So now I can push this out and all the pieces will stay attached, which is what I want. I don't want to lose that detail. Okay, and now all I need to do is stick that one over the top and it will give me that window look. It looks really cool, really like this one. But I'm gonna use my other glue just because it's got the fine nib. And I wouldn't usually use, I'm just thinking actually, I think I'm gonna, no, because this is, this is sticking fine. But I would also say maybe if you don't wanna use a liquid glue on mirrored card, use a very thin red tape. You can see here, this would fit perfectly along the frame and just along there and stick it that way. But I am just gonna add Thin amount just along the sides just to tack it in place and then I just need to line up this piece right over the top like so I'm not going to fiddle with that too much more now I'm just going to leave it like that but I think it looks really really cool okay then what I've gone and done is I've die cut four of the shutters okay you can see how they're going to work and like I said they really do work they've done little score lines here for you to create that opening and closing um, look to them but what I do want to do is with these ones here I've done it just to give it strength but also so that when you do open them you see the nice kind of shutter detail because that's how it will be but if you did want to close them up the back side isn't you know it's not that great but if you just cut the hinges off of one piece and stick it over that one you can see now it will open and close and you'll have that pattern on both sides so I'm just going to stick this down Okay, and then we're using this die here you just want to fold over on the score lines so I'm going to do that one and then that one so you will have little hinges and then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue onto the very end ones and I'm just going to lay this down and this piece will line up perfectly with this piece don't um, ignore like the the windowsill there, just the actual main frame that you want to line up and just stick that behind. You can see there it lines up with the bottom of the actual window frame. That's that one. And then again the same with this one. That dry a little bit more but you can see how cool does the shutters look now. So while that's drying this one here creates your little flower box and you just again you want to follow the score lines on the the die and you'll be able to make all of those out again if you have this one so you should have folds there and there and there and there okay and then on the bottom you should have two to form the base so you do only have a smaller area to glue but it's enough because to get it into its shape because then you're going to glue you know or add glue to everything else to attach it to, you know, whatever it is you're sticking it onto. But I'm going to do one at a time, so you just want to kind of just square it off there and just stick that little corner down so you can see how it's forming the little flower box there on the front, or window, window box, window flower box, what's it actually called? I think that's what it is. So I'm just going to grab, I need something to be able to kind of put a little, there we go. So just put my bone folder in there just so I can apply a bit of pressure just to actually stick that down so now you can see the corner on that one and then that one there I can just again just make sure you keep it at a nice right angle like so and then what we do is we'll add glue on that 
and that will attach itself there. Looks really cute. So now, so then I've got these trellis pieces. I've done two just because I liked two on top of each other. It's just to add a tiny little bit of dimension and, um, you know, completely optional, but um, I did like it. So I'm just going to run some glue all the way down there. This dries clear, so I'm not too worried. I'm not doing every bit. I'm just going to do, actually, I'll do a, one strip through the middle. Ooh, there. And then I'm just going to sit that one right over the top. Just give, just gives it a little bit of strength, really. Okay, so now I'm going to stick the window down, just get that all in place, and then everything else I'm going to put on high speed and just yeah decorate it, and uh, we're done. Finish it with a nice bow, and it's going to look lovely. So I'm going to use some glue here, and I'm just covering all of the centre there. I'm not. I mean, if you do want to stick. The shutters. What I have done on another um, on another sample for a card is I put some foam on here so that they were still kind of lifted away from the card. But I'm keeping these completely open. So again, you kind of want to. It's up to you where you're positioning it, but I'm going to go about there. It looks nice and straight. I've got equal amount, you know, showing on each side there. You know, just use your ruler, just making sure. So you're looking at two and three eighths, two and three eighths, push it up a little bit there, there we go. I think that looks lovely and then you can close it oh, right up like so. Just need to square it off a little bit once you kind of get it in place like so. And it opens up, a bit cute, I love it. There we go, and then that one there. I mean, well, did I do it under the other one? Because I don't remember sticking. Yeah, I think I did actually. So I'm going to. I'm just going to add. So you want to actually put this on first as well before you stick that down. That's just come undone there for some reason. Yeah, so I'm just going to peel that off again because I've used that kalau. I've still got some time, so I'm going to just add a little bit of glue onto the back there and there. And then stick that in there. But you only want it to come down to line up with the actual windowsill. Like so. So it's lined up with this piece here, so you want the shutter to still be able to close. Alright, again, that's if you want it to, you know, work that way. I'm just going to have to put a little bit more of this on. It's still quite tacky, but just to make sure. So yeah, if you are using, again, this dye, you, you might find it easier to actually put the uh, flower planter on first. Perfect. Right, next I'm going to stick all of this down. So I'm going to follow the design on this one here, because I do really like that. I love how I've got my groupings. I've realised I haven't done one of them, so you'll see that in the photos. I just need to stamp and colour one separately. I've stuck the bunting along there. I'll pull out a bow, but uh, yeah, it won't take me long to do it at all.
put a nice little orange gingham bow on the top there, I just thought it looked super cute, and you've got the bunting. I will do the hanging basket, but also what I've done on this one here, if you look there, you'll see that they're kind of folded down. Completely optional, but because I wanted to hang the hanging basket, I just thought they looked, yeah, quite cool, just kind of bent over on the, you know, the end of the card underneath, and you get to kind of appreciate the the detail a bit more, you see, just by folding it down and then you can attach things quite easily onto there if you want to. Also I didn't show the stamp set that I actually used and that's this one here. So you can see like this one here, like the herbs I guess is that one, there's the hanging basket and then all these ones are here, there's the planter which is around the side and then the smaller plant pots which I've used here and then the rest are die cuts but you've also got like the ivy You've got, again, some more ivy trim, so you could stamp that onto the house, because you could certainly stamp onto this, say it's white before you fold it and put it all together. So um, you got one there as well, you could stamp and then have the hanging basket from there. So, you know, there's lots of, um, you know, ways to, to change it up, but I just, I love it. So now you can see the difference in size. So that's the three inch wide and that's the four, but the, the measurements for this one will be in my blog. And also if you do want to have the handles, these are just, uh, what have I got here, um, five eighths of an inch by the length of A4, which is about 11 and three quarters. Okay, but again, you can have them obviously, you know, however you want them. But um, I put them in that position because originally I did have holes there, but then I changed it. So it's again, that's all up to you. Fabric handles are really nice as well, but I think they are adorable. So I'm going to fill that up with some my scrap ribbon pieces and just enjoy it because I just think it's really, really cute. And then this one here, you will no doubt see on social media over on Craft Stash and on Hachanda when they launch the collection. So, um, or it should already have been out now, but anyway, but, um, there, there it is. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this one. I just think it is super cute. I want to go and I want my craft room to be in there. That'd be really nice. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.